This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. We're talking with Siobhan Scott, Hidden Killers contributor, psychotherapist, and author of The Minds of Mass Killers. Brian Koberger is the topic of this segment right now. Just the other week, the defense of Koberger moving to have, of of all things here, the indictment dismissed. What a bold statement, right? Let's just have this indictment dismissed because we feel like you don't got anything. There's like a mountain of information. They argue that the grand jury was misled as to the standard of proof required for an indictment. They say the grand jury should have been informed that the standard of proof required for an indictment would be beyond a reasonable doubt. However, they also argue that the grand jury was instead erroneously instructed with the standard of proof required for a presentment, which they say would have reasonable ground for believing the defendant has committed an alleged offense. The failure to properly instruct a grand jury as to the standard of proof is grounds for dismissal of the indictment According to the filing, it, it, it's a little bit confusing. Yeah, uh, to connect the dots of this word to that word, and this mean that. What do you make of this? I know they're they seem to be throwing everything at the wall that they possibly can at this moment in time. But is that the right observation to be making? You know, it sounds again legalese, very confusing. It's hard for lay people who aren't attorneys to make sense of how valid is this argument. It sure strikes me as he's got some very bright, motivated attorneys who are working very hard to come up with anything and everything that they can. And as you say, let's just throw it all at the wall and hope that something sticks. The prosecutors in the case for Koberger have filed a motion asking the judge to compel his defense team to share information about the potential alibi. Last week, the deadline came and went. They did not provide one, quote, unquote, and I put it in air quotes of the alibi they did provide, which basically just said, he's not there. He wasn't there. Evidence corroborating Mr. Koberger being at a location other than the King Road address will be disclosed pursuant to discovery and evidentiary rules as well as statutory requirements. It's anticipated this evidence may be offered by way of cross-examination of witnesses produced by the state as well as calling expert witnesses. That does not sound like an alibi to me. (laughs) No, no, really a red herring, isn't it? Let's just throw some doubt out here. Yeah, it's not an alibi. The prosecution is saying, what is the alibi? Because if you're going to put that out there that you're going to do that we need to know what you're actually going to do in discovery Mm -hmm. but i don't know that koberger's people really even know the answer to that yet yeah it it just sounds like a legal maneuver are they in this case do you feel like they're fighting more to keep him alive than it is so much a jail sentence or a prison sentence for the rest of his life by by putting all of this out there at this moment in time trying to influence potential jurors in Moscow who have not ever been selected yet with these sort of statements and these sort of doubts. Yeah, Yeah, it does. It just, it's, it strikes me as a rather desperate attempt to just do everything they possibly can to mitigate the damage, which is going to be the death penalty if it goes that way. How credible is a defense assertion to make a claim that DNA could have been planted at a crime scene. And when a statement like that is made directly by the defense, it wasn't a podcaster, it wasn't a reporter, it wasn't this or that, it was literally from the defense making that Mm -hmm. sort of assertion. Mm -hmm. How much credence does it have? And then how much burden of proof lies then on the prosecution to say, you're making this up or to prove that that's (laughs) not remotely true. Just to make the statement is one thing, but then Everyone's going to go, what if it is? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The reasonable doubt. What can we toss out there that may just get people thinking maybe? And there are people who perhaps innately have a distrust of the police for reasons of their own history. And they're going to be ready to say, oh, yeah, the cops are dirty and they always plant evidence. I hear people say that. Usually those are people who have a bit of a criminal history themselves. You can never trust the cops. The cops plant evidence. You'll hear people say that when they've had run-ins with the criminal justice system. And of course, there are these rare cases, how rare, we don't really know, where evidence has been planted 
I don't think in this case that's what we're looking at. What does it tell us about his support, the fact that we publicly have not seen anything from the parents, anything from the sisters, other than we've learned about the raid on the parents' home and some of the conversations that may have happened around the dinner table at Thanksgiving with sisters somewhat questioning if he was Mm -hmm. the killer. The silence, does it mean anything in a case like this? I think this is a case where the family is trying to do the right thing. They're trying to stay out of the limelight. They're not out there in some kind of attention-seeking way. They don't strike me as nutty people who are trying to do lots of interviews and get attention for themselves, which is good. It speaks well of them. So they've got some boundaries. And I just, as I've said, by all reports, they are very normal people. They have been very good people. And it's just really sad for them. I've got to think that they're absolutely devastated. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi.